out of all the championships and the awards, David said one of the best things he's ever done in his career is helping the next generation. <laughs> hitting the extra point, it bounces off the field goal post and in. I mean, you, you, you can't even write that in a book. It, it was great. And something we talked about earlier was that when you have two high power offenses like this, scoring about 30 to 35 points a game, whatever defense steps up is usually the one that's going to win. And that rang true tonight. A San Diego sports sweep. The Aztecs, the Padres, and the Wave win. In the immortal words of Ice Cube, today was a good day. Hello to my San Diego family. This is the Fox 5 Sports Final. I'm Frank Jefferson. To have this in front of your whole crowd, yeah. especially for you from being here, what's it like? It's incredible. I mean, it's special for everybody on the same level, I think. But for me, I think I got a different understanding than most of these guys. Pretty, I mean, you know, the Tom Brady of the 2020s, perhaps? I, 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 I can't <laughs> give him Brady yet, but he is often one of the greatest stars yeah. I think we've ever seen. Over the years, Julius has gained a lot of followers on social media doing cool stuff like this. Ready? Yeah. It's not every day that you get the Padres and the Aztecs in the same place, and that's exactly what the fans are going to get tonight. The Padres honoring the Aztecs NCAA title run, Lamont Butler and head coach Brian Dutcher throwing the first pitch tonight. The Lord is my first love, my family is my second, and my third is the Padres. Only. Padre fans can go in here. Barbara Lutz is the definition of a Friar fanatic, devoting a whole room in her El Cajon home to the Padres. It's 50 years of memorabilia. Lutz is one of the original season ticket holders. She still remembers her very first game. June 21st, 1970. The Padres had just started, just like her marriage. We had tickets, and so we went to the Padre game on our first day of our honeymoon. And just like a marriage, Lutz is loyal to the Friars. From the lows. Back in the years, it wasn't real easy to be a Padre fan. To the highs. Ripped down the right field line. When the Padres went to the World Series in 84 and 98. It was an incredible feeling. Incredible. But her favorite Padres moment, October 15th, 2022. Beating the Dodgers. That was monumental. <laughs> I was at that game on that Saturday night when we beat them. You're yelling as loud as you can yell, and you can't even hear yourself. It was, that's what it was like at that stadium. Barbara and her late husband, John, shared 50 wonderful years together before his death in 2021. The 79-year-old, thankful for her husband's support of her passion for more than half a century. My husband was um, just a very special person, and he knew if it was something I really loved, then, you know, we have to do it because that was fine with him. That's the kind of man he was. These days, Lou still goes to Padres games. She brings her grandkids. She says her favorite seat is right behind home plate, not just for the view, but for the memory of her first game with her husband on their honeymoon. This is from our wedding. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, nothing much has changed in 50 years. Here we are again, laughing. <laughs> Tara Miranda Parsons didn't play sports as a kid, but she was born to run, doing it six days a week. Anywhere between one hour to eight hours. In 2015, she ran across the Grand Canyon. Yes, the Grand Canyon. The experience leading her down a path of extreme sports. 100K, and then 100 miles, and then I started swimming and cycling, and then I started to do triathlon. Flying 8,000 miles to Nepal to compete in her first ever X-Tri triathlon. Running into a problem once she landed. We're watching the luggage come off, our regular bag show up, the bike bag never shows up. The airline lost her bike and race gear. Despite having a week until the race, she was getting worried. And so I thought, wow, I've trained for months and for nothing, kind of. The day before the race, she got a call. The race organizers were like, nope, you're in. Like, you, we, we found a bike for you. With less than 24 hours before the event, she pieced together the rest of her equipment. Bought some things and borrowed some things and then it was game on. Coming into the story, one thing I thought about was Parsons having to adjust for the elevation above sea level. San Diego's average elevation is about 20 meters, and Nepal has an average of 3,000, but she says she was ready for it. I did train on Palomar Mountain on my bike a lot, which gets up to like six, five to 6,000 feet, so I got a little bit of altitude training in beforehand. The training paid off. The first woman to cross the finish line. I didn't expect 
to win at all. There were so many things stacked against me. So I was just so, so grateful that I was able to be there and to complete it. And then to win was like a cherry on top.